and the gunner training dot com. Our first danger phrases and power phrases are for home, and the first phrase is "I don't appreciate." So remember, this week, please be aware of if you use this phrase, "I don't appreciate." Be aware of purging that phrase. For example, and this is one of those where it really does apply both at work and at home. Because at at work, I've heard many people say things such as. You know, I don't appreciate it when you come into my office without calling. Or they'll say things like, "I don't appreciate it when you tell me something will be done by five and it's not done until six. And at home, we'll say things such as, "I don't appreciate it when you talk to me that way. I don't appreciate it when you say you're going to do something and then you don't." So instead of "I don't appreciate it," what we mean to really say is, "Here's how I'd like you to change your behavior," and simply state the change in behavior that you're looking for. So, for example, instead of saying something such as, I don't appreciate it when you come into my office without knocking. We could simply say, "Please knock before you come into my office." Period. Or, I don't appreciate it when you say something's going to be done at five and then it's not turned in until six. What we mean to say is something more along the lines of, "Please deliver things on time, and if you can't, let me know in advance." At home, for example, I don't appreciate it when you talk to me that way. What we mean to say is, "Please talk to me with love and respect, the way I do to you." Things like that. So, if you are about to use the phrase "I don't appreciate it" or "I don't appreciate yada yada yada," remember that is not a directive. What we want to do is tell people not what we don't like or what we don't appreciate or what we don't want to see more of. What we want to tell people is what to do. And of course, simply because we tell somebody how to behave or what to do, that does not mean they're going to do it. However, if we can get in the habit of being more directive with our communication and more explicit with "here's how I would like you to behave," rather than pointing out what we don't want, that remember is the correct syntax that we should use as powerful communicators to help the person to whom we're communicating with process the information that we are delivering. And it's very Easy to avoid sounding negative or sounding like a nag or sounding aggressive. If instead of talking about what we don't appreciate or what we don't like, we simply tell people the way we would like them to behave or communicate with us. And it might seem harsh or difficult. For example, if you are going to change your speech patterns and instead of saying things such as I don't appreciate it when you come into my office without knocking, or I don't appreciate it when you come into my bedroom without knocking. If you instead start saying to people things such as "Please knock before you come into my office," or "Please knock before you come into my bedroom," that might seem really harsh and abrupt to some people. Get into the habit of communicating that way. It's more efficient. It's more direct. People will respect you more. And after you get into the habit of doing it, it's much easier. Than simply telling people what you don't want or what you don't appreciate, and then expecting them to know how to change their behavior all by themselves. That is up to you, as a powerful communicator, to tell people how you'd like them to behave or communicate with you. So again, I don't appreciate. Eliminate, and instead give a clear directive that explains how you would like people to behave or communicate with you. The other danger phrase for home, which again applies to work, is "whatever." We tend to use the phrase "whatever" when we are done, when we're sick of communicating with somebody, when we've already expressed our opinion, we don't feel as though our voice is being heard, and so we'll say "whatever." What I would like you to focus on is if you use that phrase, if you use that word, actually, "whatever," eliminate it. Silence is better. The broken record is better. You know, for example, if your spouse says to you, "Hey, where do you want to go for dinner tonight?" and you were to say something such as, "You know, I got kind of a hankering for Mexican," and he were to say or she were to say something like, "Really? I was kind of hoping we'd go to the Olive Garden." Don't just say, "Oh, whatever." Say either, "Well, you know, again, I kind of have a hankering for Mexican." If you want your voice to be heard, or if you really do not care, say something more along the lines of. Well, that's fine. We can go Mexican the next time, or say nothing. But when we say whatever, what that signals is, I do not have the words to respond to you, and my communication skills have just reached their limit. We do not want to send that message. So 
Eliminate the word whatever from your verbal repertoire and either say what you really want to say clearly and tactfully or say nothing is always better than saying whatever. And our danger phrases and power phrases for work this week are danger phrase number one, good job. Now, that might seem strange as if we're not supposed to, as if I'm saying that we're not supposed to tell people good job at work, and that's not the case. What I would like you to focus on this week to bring it up a notch, instead of telling somebody something simple, such as if they worked really hard in a report, instead of saying something like, oh, good job, be more detail oriented in what they did well. And it's frequently very easy and convenient to use the phrase, you made a real contribution to yada, yada, yada. And so instead of simply saying something such as, you did a great job, you could try something such as, that report was excellent. You made a real contribution in our sales meeting. Thank you very much. So be more specific about the contribution that people are making. And the last danger phrase for work is, I lied. Now, what I mean by this one is, we will frequently hear people say, and if you say this, don't say it anymore. When they misspeak or when they say something that's incorrect, they'll say something such as, oh wait, I lied, it's yada, yada, yada. For example, it could be something simple, such as I'll ask my uh, coworker, hey, do you have Jan's phone number? And she'll say, yeah, I do, it's extension 872. Wait, I lied, it's extension 824. In those types of situations, it is common for us to hear people say, I lied, and then say something different because that has become a common speech pattern. If that is a speech pattern of yours, eliminate it. And if you mentor people at work, remember to, to, to uh, encourage them to eliminate that from their verbal repertoire because using the phrase, I lied, whether it's in jest, whether it's a common verbal pattern, for whatever the reason, is going to dramatically decrease your professional power and tarnish your image. So of course we want to eliminate the phrase, I lied, especially if we're really telling a lie. But specifically what I mean is, if you happen to use that phrase or know people who use that phrase as a way of saying, oh, I misspoke, or hold on, that was incorrect, remember, eliminate I lied, that is never going to be an acceptable verbal pattern, and instead replace it with something simple such as, I misspoke, or I was incorrect whatever the truth really is, because chances are if you simply make a verbal typo or you are mistaken, you're not lying. Therefore, don't say that and label yourself a liar, which is exactly what I lied does in most people's eyes. And those are your danger phrases and power phrases for the week. And now we have come to our dealing with difficult people strategies of the week. And what I would like to do during this section is I'd like to cover three principles that we should all keep in mind when we're dealing with difficult people. These, are These free effective communication skills training course videos brought to you by communication expert keynote speaker, Dan O'Connor.